Hello everybody. This, this is Gazza the Guzzard. He's been um, in storage in my loft for many, many years and he thought he'd come out because of the, the COVID-19 crisis. Yes, indeed, Gazza. He's come out of storage. He's decided that he'd love to tell stories to all you bored children at home. So, what's that? I, I know we're going to get on with it. So what we're offering is you free stories here on YouTube on my Facebook page every week. Gazza the Guzzard. Thank you. Gazza, stop that. Gazza the Guzzard will be here to read stories with us all. Um, I'll off also be offering other things on my website and pages so that you can get involved and have some activities with Jelly Kelly and other puppets and magic. But for now, let's have story time. You love this story. Yes, he does. He loves this story. This is called The Elves and the Shoemaker. <clears throat> no, I'll do the reading, thank you. You don't speak Guzzard, do you? No, I'll, I'll do the reading. Once upon a time, there was a poor shoemaker who had no money left to buy food for himself or his wife. When he looked round his shop, he found that all he had was just enough leather to make one pair of shoes. Just, just one. As he carefully cut out the shoes, he wondered sadly if anyone would ever come along to buy them. Then he laid out the leather on the workbench, ready to sew the next day, and went upstairs to bed. He went to bed, yes he did, he went to bed, Gazza. In the morning, when he went to his workbench, the shoemaker couldn't believe his eyes. Instead of the leather he cut out the night before, he saw a pair of fine shoes already made. The shoemaker looked carefully at the shoes. The stitches were small and even, and the shoes had been polished until they shone. He was very puzzled and showed them to his wife. Who could have made the shoes so perfectly? You don't know? No, I don't know either. Maybe it was the elves. Let's find out. Later that day, a rich woman came into the shop to buy some shoes. When the shoemaker showed her the pair he'd found on his workbench, the woman smiled. These are very fine shoes, she said as she tried them on. They fit perfectly. I'll give you five pieces of silver for them. I know, five pieces of silver, Gazza. Now the shoemaker could buy some food and he could also buy enough leather for two pairs of shoes. It's maths. As before, he cut out the leather and went to bed. I'll do it. Thank you, Gazza. I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Once again, the same thing happened. When the shoemaker went to his workbench the next day, there were two pairs of fine shoes waiting for him. They were polished so that they glowed in the sunlight and the stitches were small and even. That afternoon, a rich merchant came into the shop. He liked the shoes so much that he bought both pairs and he paid the shoemaker well for them. He's doing all right. Yeah, he's doing all right, Gazza. He's doing all right. That day, the shoemaker was able to buy enough leather for four pairs of shoes. Just as before, he cut out the leather and left it on his workbench overnight. And in the morning, he found four fine pairs of shoes there instead. The same thing happened night after night, and day after day, rich people came to buy the shoes. Soon, the shoemaker and his wife were rich too. Aren't they lucky? Yes, they are lucky. Lucky things happen to good people, that's why they're Gaza. One evening, not long before Christmas, no, no, Chris, yeah, Christmas, sorry, you can't say Christmas around Gaza, you get very excited. <clears throat> One evening, not long before, the shoemaker said to his wife, someone has been helping us all this time, sewing the shoes so beautifully, and we still don't know who it is. How can we find out? Well, his wife said, why don't we stay up tonight and watch? So after dinner, they lit a candle, and they went into the shop. They hid behind the counter and waited to see what would happen. What's going to happen? I don't know, Gazza. You don't know? He doesn't know. As the last door opened and... Hang on, what's that? I've skipped a page. I may well have skipped a page there, Gazza. You're right. No? I just waited to see what's happened. We haven't skipped a page. We're all right. <laughs> As the last door opened and in ran two tiny elves dressed in rags. They went straight to the workbench, picked up the leather line there and set to work. They sewed and hammered until all the shoes were finished and they polished, they polished every shoe. Stop it, stop it, guys, I'm trying to read. And they polished every shoe until it shone in the moonlight. Then they ran quickly away. Will you stop, will you stop? I'm trying to read to the children. Sorry. <laughs> the next morning, the shoemaker said to his wife, no, he didn't, no, he didn't say that, Gather, that'd be wrong. <laughs> the shoemaker said to his wife, those well elves have been working so hard for us. How can we ever repay them? I know, said his wife, why don't we make them something warm to wear? Nice idea. Their own clothes were thin and torn and their little feet were bare. I could start by knitting them little caps and you could make them some shoes. What a nice wife, she is nice. 
The shoemaker thought it was a very good idea and that evening he carefully made two pairs of tiny shoes and his wife knitted two little caps. Over the next few days, the shoemaker helped his wife to make all sorts of clothes for the elves. They made some little shirts, trousers and waistcoats and finally the shoemaker's wife knitted two pairs of tiny socks. Bet they look good, yeah, bet they look dapper. Hmm. By Christmas, no, no, sorry, I said the word, I said the word, sorry, it's not Christmas yet, it's not, it's not Christmas, it's not, it's not Christmas. By Eve, everything stood in a little pile. The shoemaker's wife fetched some pretty paper and ribbons and they wrapped each present one by one. The shoemaker was so pleased with the little shoes that he made, that he'd made and he saved them till last and wrapped them up very carefully. Then they put all the presents out on the workbench and hid behind the counter to wait for the elves. Are you trying to hide, Gaza? <laughs> you don't have to hide. They're hiding from the elves. In the middle of the night, the elves dashed in, ready to start work. But when they went to the workbench, all they found was the little pile of presents. The, I know. The elves looked at each other in surprise. Then they realised that the presents were for them. And they laughed and began to unwrap the packages. When they saw the clothes, they leapt with joy. They took off all their ragged things and put on their brand new outfits. Then the elves get merrily out of the door saying, Oh, what handsome boys we are. We will work on chores no more. I can't sing. No, stop that. <laughs> that was the last the shoemaker and his wife saw of the two little men. Oh, it's okay, Gaza. But they never forgot the elves and they were rich and happy for the rest of their lives. That was a nice story. Yes, it was, Gaza. And I tell you what, kids, we've got more stories coming for you. Just keep, get your mum and dad or whoever to keep an eye out on all my channels. I'll be posting things as regularly as I'm able to. And I hope to put a smile on your face. Please comment and subscribe because then you'll get notifications when I do stuff. And, and it helps us too. Yeah, if you could comment and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Thanks, guys, and stay safe. Bye.